building up the body of Christ, bringing us all near to the kingdom of God. Moses shared the law of God, while Elijah shared the directive voice of God. John the Baptist would replace the role of Elijah with that voice, and Jesus, in today's reading, is replacing the role of Moses. And as this setting takes place today on the mountain, Moses and Elijah and John the Baptist have already died. Yet on the mountain, the kingdom of God is being passed on to Jesus. In today's story of the transfiguration, advances God's plan for the disciples to finally recognize Jesus apart from all the other figures of this great biblical story, that Jesus is more than a prophet. Yet the disciples still miss it and want to build up a monument to capture the moment on the mountain. How can the disciples see Jesus is the kingdom of God coming within us. This past week I attended a conference up in D.C. and for a couple mornings I got up early to go exercise. Each day heading out on the sidewalk beginning on Connecticut Avenue connecting to 17th Street, eventually passing the heavily guarded White House gates and weaving my way around to the National Mall. Moving from all of that concrete to that impressive place of white pillars of monuments amongst pools of water and grass surrounded by impressive buildings all framing it in place. At one hand, at one end, Abraham Lincoln sitting like a god in a dwelling to the tower of the Washington Monument, pointing like an arrow up to the heavens. The early hours of traffic are already noticeable, but the majority of the movement are men and women like me who are weaving around on foot trying to get our blood flowing as we start our day. Even though I'm in a city I do not know very well, I still refuse to take my cell phone when I exercise, and so as I begin to work my way back to the hotel, I get turned around and lost those days. This has been one of the greatest joys of moving to Richmond is the ease of the access to get to D.C. It is such a magnificent city. Once you can get your car into a shelter and then you can hoof it on foot. And I love how the National Mall outside tells the story of our heroes in our country who paved the way for progress, who paved the way for freedom. And inside those various museums that align it so well, we have stories of flight, stories of nature, stories of humanity, and so much more. Stories of the transformation of all life and of our democracy. And it tells the full story, both the beauty and the struggles of humanity. Every time I go to D.C., especially when I go with my boys and explore with them through their eyes, there's always that moment when it gets towards the end of our trip where I wish we could stay longer. Maybe we should just get a hotel tonight and do it again tomorrow. But then I think, why rush taking in such great stories? 
and instead to go ahead and to get back on 95 before 2 o'clock comes. <laughs> and just build upon that experience on another day. Our psalmist today tells us how God spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. In Exodus, God spoke to Moses on the cloud-covered mountain, just like God spoke to Jesus in Matthew's gospel today. Whenever God speaks, it marks the highest point of the current story being lived out. God spoke to Jesus at his baptism, but every time God speaks, it's not just to the person whose name is in the text, it is God speaking to all of us. God spoke so that humanity could hear the voice of God. God spoke to give us the law through Moses. God spoke through Elijah and John to give us words of direction. God has always spoken to bring us near the kingdom of God. The problem is we have to listen. When we disregard the voice of God, the word of God coming to us, we find how easy it is that we see the importance of the moment and want to quickly go out and build a monument, whether it's for one of the prophets or for one of the presidents, instead to just be in that story with God and allow God to come in and to take residence within us. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is so good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here. I will do. I will stay. I will build a representation of this monumental moment. I will control what follows this highlight of this story. And God's answer is no no, no. Be still. Resist that human nature to do and instead listen. The reason why Moses was given the law is the same reason why Elijah and John were given words to share the hopes that we might do this one thing. Listen. When we truly listening, then we are participating in building. Not building a memory marker of an event, but building God's kingdom within our life together allowing through listening for that cloud of God to come into us, allowing us to live into the very wonder of God's kingdom and realize that we are a monument. We are a tabernacle. We are a shelter. We are God's shell. And listening requires for us to get lost in God's voice, speaking of the stories of the past, speaking of the stories of the now, so that we might become a builder for God's glory. So we are called to be quiet, to move away from a knee-jerk reaction and listen. running back uh, to the hotel on those mornings and realizing with each step that I was becoming a little bit more lost. Not necessarily because of, uh, 
me heading in the wrong direction, I was becoming more and more lost because of the refusal to acknowledge that the solution to my problem was so easy that it was hard. For I needed to stop moving, approach a stranger, and ask for directions. My brothers and sisters in Christ, that is what real prayer is. It is for us to go to our God and to ask for direction. God, help me clear my head. Help me let go of my control so that I might hear your voice direct my next movement in your story. For God, you are always building. Building within our shells your greatness so that hopefully we can be filled up and go out and share your glory in the world. That hopefully that when we come down from mountaintop moments or just everyday life moments, that in prayer we can be changed into God's likeness. When we are changed in God's likeness, that's when transfiguration takes place. It happens when we stop doing, controlling the story, and listen to him. Amen.